I want to start off today with an activity. I'm going to list some names of people that you may recognize. And without screaming, I would like for somebody to figure out what all of these people have in common. Phil Jackson. Pat Riley. Whenever you feel like you know the answer, you can shout it out without screaming. NBA coaches. No. Tony Dungy. No. Jim Harbaugh. Joe Torrey. You can say the answer whenever you're ready. Oh, they all, they all like are part of a sport organization. Right now, Aaron? They all play. No. Joe Girardi. Tyron Lou. Luke Walton. Robin Ventura. They're all coaches of a team that has a star player? No. Fantastic. These are all coaches who used to be professional players themselves. Round two. Listen carefully. Dan Quinn. Mike Zimmer. Rex Ryan. Gus Bradley. Bill Belichick. Coach. Whatever you have the answer. NFL the coaches coordinators. No. NFL coaches that no. got fired. No. Used to be defensive coordinators. No. Used to be offensive coordinators. No. So coaches. No. They're all good coaches. This is a list of players of former players that were not good enough to become professional players. But nonetheless, they ended up becoming head coaches in their respective sports. Bill Belichick used to be like Rift? Used to be a lineman. Ah, yeah. Which leads me to the following question How could it be that people who were not recognized? as one of the best amongst the activity that they performed and were a part of, could lead a group of people, adults, into victory. How could that be? But before we get into that, I want us to understand what it is we, as a class, are most likely already doing, not only on the sports field, but in the classroom. Most likely when I'm playing a sports game, if I'm one of you sitting in this room, and we can include myself in this process as well, here's what happens. I'm playing a very, very competitive game. One of my teammates turns the ball over, and right away, one of two thoughts goes into my head. Number one, he must not care. Number two, he flat out stinks. And no matter how you slice it, my reaction to that person is, <clears throat> I'm going to yell at you because why are you frustrating me? Why are you not doing what I think you should be doing? So I'm going to yell at you to let you know just how badly you're making me look and feel. And the question really becomes here, why do we do this? How does this help us? In what capacity does yelling and making your friend feel badly help you and your team win a ball game? Let me ask you a question. When's the last time somebody yelled at you profusely, degraded you and made you feel like less of a human being, and the first thought that came to your mind was, ah, I feel inspired. I want to listen to what this individual has to say. Let me really give you a good ear to make sure I heard every detail so I could do what you're telling me to do. Chances are probably never. So forgetting about how we're making other people feel for a second, let's consider the tactic we're currently using to help ourselves win. And right now that's to make other people feel badly by yelling at them because A, we already know why it is that they're not performing the way we think that they should be performing. And it calls to question, what is leadership? How does one become a leader? 
What are some fantastic qualities about being a leader? Can we learn from in order for us to follow suit and do the same? Because at the end of the day, boys, we all want success. Whether it's on the sports field, whether it's in the classroom, whether it's in life, whether it's in business, we just want to succeed. And we're going to need the help of others in order for us to do so. So how do we get this thing called success? And how do we find this ability to lead in order to get it? Bill Bradley, former NBA player and U.S. Senator, put it this way. He said, you want to be a leader? You want to be able to lead? You need to unlock the potential of those around you, and then you'll be a leader. And I think it's fitting that recently, a couple of weeks ago, we read Parashat Yitro. And what does Yitro recommend to Moshe? <coughs> He tells him, Moshe, we know that you're great and you're awesome at what you do. You're the chief judge of the people, but you're exhausted. You can't do this by yourself. You need other people around you to help you be more successful to lead the people of Israel. And so here's all of what Bill Bradley is saying. You want to be able to have success. You want to be able to not get frustrated at the teammates around you. Start thinking about other people other than yourself to start. Because the mistake I make and the trap I fall into when I'm an athlete is I only think about things in terms of how I feel. I only think about things in terms of how I understand them. So instead of assuming that you know your friend doesn't care or flat out stinks, maybe something else is going on. Maybe he's just having a bad day. Maybe the other team called him a name. Maybe the referee didn't give him a call. Maybe your quarterback, maybe it's even you, hasn't passed him the ball all day, and he feels like there's no reason to try anymore. And so, boys, what we need to start doing is what these coaches that I listed earlier on have figured out how to do. Instead of me needing to be the best, I need to figure out how to make everybody else the best. And so in order for me to be a successful head coach, I don't need to be a professional athlete. I don't even need to be the best player. What I need to do is I need to be able to understand other people and then motivate them to unlock their potential. And so something we could do very easy. Ask the guy how he's feeling. Ask him what's the matter instead of you already knowing the answer. Before you ask him to go to PT, hey, Shlomo, is everything okay? And maybe he'll tell you, yeah, you know, the other team, they called me a name, it's really bothering me. You know what you're going to do now as a leader? You're going to go over to that person. You're going to let him know it's not okay to talk to my player like that. Somebody else? sticks up for me and goes over to the guy who was bothering me and makes them clear to know that they shouldn't be bothering me. Yeah, I want to go to fight for that person. That's the first person I'm going to defend when it comes down to playing sports and something's on the line. I'm going to go to war for that guy. I'm not getting the ball. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize you weren't getting the ball. We'll get you in the next play. I want to go to that person. Why? Really for one reason only. He understands me and he cares about me. And I want to fight for that person. So who in this room wants to be Moshe Rabbeinu? Who in this room wants to be Bill Belichick? And if you do, right, most of us are probably saying, duh, of course I want to be that guy. It's not so easy. And it's not obvious how to get there. It's very difficult. These skills do not come natural to us. And probably most importantly is you need to be willing to put yourself on the bottom. I need to care about other people. I need to be concerned with what they're feeling. You figure out how to do all these things, you just might be one heck of a leader one day. So put yourself to the test, put yourself to the challenge. Not even for the people around you. Yes, it'll be great for you to benefit them. But for you to have success, for you to know what it's like, to be able to win, 
Start helping other people around you. Start thinking about what matters most to them. And surprisingly, you'll see that all of a sudden it'll have real change for you and your own success. Thank you.